<laughs> Yo, what's up? Oh my gosh. I've been doing this for how long and right. I still don't know what the mute button is. It's okay. Yes. We're going to get it together one day. Maybe we need to trade up. Maybe I need to to trade off and give your your uh, brain a break. That would actually be... I don't know. Wait, I was about to say that would be wonderful, but I don't know how I would feel about that because I feel like this is like my safe. I don't know if you feel like that, Jackie. I do. Yeah, like this is like my safe. I don't know. Yeah, because when I had to start the show without you last time when I didn't know if you were going to make it, Mm -hmm. you were like so close on me. And I was like, I don't know how two people sit back here. I don't like it. Oh, when you had all those people. It was like you just had to be close, like so close. Yeah. And it's so funny because when I was doing it with Ben, I never touched any of this. It was all him. But yeah. So you're a weirdo, basically. Mm-hmm. What's new? Okay, well, <laughs> yeah, whatever. What's Anyways, up, guys? It's your girl, Kirsten. And Moni. And we're back at it again on this Young Tuesday. Ooh, ooh. I'm not about to play with you in this hood call. This is a this is the energy knob. Let me turn it up. Ooh, <laughs> ooh. <laughs> <laughs> on you. <laughs> Let me turn it up on you. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't appreciate the hood calls. Anyways, what are we talking about today? Yes, so we are talking about the rebirth and the rebuild, okay? That sound deep. Real deep. That shit get deep. <laughs> deep. <laughs> you just gotta make a fucking track. I'm that, sorry. Yes, the rebirth and the rebuild um, based on some things in our life that we had to um, rebirth ourselves from and rebuild from. Okay. Yes, and then we're also going to be featuring um, the ladies from Life After the Feds. We're going to be reading their stories and how they work to rebuild from where they came from. Okay. So, yes, yes. Super inspiring stories. Super excited to share that with you guys. Before we get into that, how yes. was your week leading up to today? It's been... <laughs> You're funny. First of all, I got to rebirth and rebuild from this weekend. That's because funny. <laughs> because my friends were doing the most. I was just being a wholesome little angelic angel that I always am. You said you? Mm-hmm. Simone Jenkins? Simone Tiana Jenkins. Oh, okay. First of all, why y'all FaceTiming me asking me what's my middle name? Talking about... uh, Who FaceTimed you? I asked you, did you remember FaceTiming me? You was like, yeah, I remember. You FaceTime me. Oh, on Sunday? And it was like, what's your oh, middle yeah, I name? Do, I don't remember asking you what your middle name was. But and I do remember FaceTime Jamise was talking about, it's Monique. <laughs> 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 so you thought my name was Simone Monique. <laughs> I think <laughs> I thought your, wait, what did I say your middle name was? What did I think it was? I forgot. Maybe Denise or something. That sounds like some shit I was like. It's Tiana though. Oh, okay. I should start going by that. Like how you go by Kirsten. Okay, Tiana. Like, Tiana. No. No. What's but your name? anyway, Tiana. So Watch you, next time. you, you were busy being an ang- angel, and what happened? I was busy being an angel, celebrating um, Jamisa's birthday. Um, it was a really good weekend. We had a lot of fun, but your girl is tired. Okay, so we went to um, thir- on Thursday. We went to go see Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> what we thought, <laughs> what we thought we were gonna see, but ghetto ass. Let me let me not even put them out there like that. Anyway, this theater it was janky, and they had to give everybody a refund because it was too blurry to watch. But um, <clears throat> high hopes, high hopes for when I go see the movie. I got a refund for all the shit, okay? Because I was very upset. I had a real life attitude. Well, people got free popcorn, so that's cool. I was sure like, the, the I was like one of the first people to walk out and get my money back. Like I was like inching in my. I was like, you were like it. personally offended. I was. Yes. I was. I felt like it was very disrespectful. It was very disrespectful to me and my childhood that they it's didn't upset ha- that at they me weren't and my home girl because we feel like they weren't if prepared. If you can't go to the movies to watch Lion King, then where the hell can you go? You stupid. <laughs> <laughs> But that's how I felt. I was actually very ups- I was very upset. You can see how upset I was on my face. No, you was getting loud and you was doing that thing that you do when you get mad. <laughs> You'd be like, because it was like, what the f- like? I'm I'm about to go. Okay, I'm. I could y'all. have been doing something else with mm-hmm. my time. I had wasted money on Wingstop. I would have never even spent twenty dollars on Wingstop had I not had to go to the movies. That would that would have been twenty dollars that I still would have had in my bank account. I was trying to go to Chili's. I was trying to see what's up with y'all. But nobody was nobody heard me when I said that. I, guess. I didn't hear you say anything about Chili's. I was like, so y'all not trying to go to Chili's? I didn't hear anything. Was I talking? If I was talking, I like definitely didn't hear you. We started talking about the tea, and oh, uh, and then that was it after that. Pretty much. Okay. Well. But know. yeah, so we did that on Thursday, and then we went to 
Trap karaoke. Oh, I didn't um, make it. Shayna was on bed rest, but that was a lot of fun. That was my first time there. <laughs> Shayna was on bed rest. Shayna was on bed rest. Um, and then uh, we also went to <laughs> brunch. Okay. And then we rested. And then we, well, I went to um, to see Jess Hilarious and Brea. It was a great show. Have you guys ever hung out in Brea before? I'm sorry. I, we hang out in Brea. <laughs> we hang out in Brea all the time. Me and, um. Okay. You know the comedy club? Yes. Okay. It's nice. That's all I have to say. Oh, okay. Like, Just hilarious like... perform there, and and um, so they ordered. We ordered a bunch of food. It was a lot of people in there, so all of the food got backed up. We didn't even get it until like the end of Just Hilarious set. Oh no! And guess what? They comped it. <laughs> oh, so that's <laughs> two times in a row that your girl getting stuff. Com- well, I mean, I didn't get to see the movie, but. I'm still mad because now I have to find new time in my day and in my life to go. Um, I don't know when I'm going to see that movie. Probably Maybe we can make it a date together. Are you down? Yeah, let's do it on a Tuesday. On a Tuesday. Yeah. Gotcha, girl. Okay. I'm down with that. Not today, though. I'm not I'm not down with it today. Um, oh, hell no, not today. Mm-mm. Is that all you did? Does that mean I've seen you all weekend? You see me each of those days this weekend, probably. Except for Friday. Except for Friday. Because I, I got sick all of a sudden. I don't know what that was about. Yeah, 24 hour. Uh... I Actually, my throat was still hurting the next day. Anyways, um, I had fun um, this past weekend uh, celebrating Mies's birthday. Shout out to Mies. Ooh, ooh! Is that our thing now? Um... <laughs> Shout out to Mies. Um, we, I'm mad that I missed a uh, trap karaoke, but other than that, um, it was, uh, you know, fun. The parts I remember. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> oh, you gonna you gonna okay. skate around? No, I'm not gonna skate. I'm not gonna skate. I don't even know how to skate. Okay, but look. So Thursday, yes, you already know I was mad because I got my boyfriend to come out and come to the movies with us, you know, and then the movie wasn't even working. And I feel like it ruined the whole beginning of The Lion King for me. Like it was really pissing the me off. The whole beautiful Let me tell you why I was mad. Life. Let me tell you why I was mad. I was mad because we told these people, okay, that the, that the screen was messed up before the movie even started and they were like oh it's gonna be fixed before the movie but then after 20 minutes of previews they just cut off the screen and turn the lights back on and say oh the movie gonna play in a few minutes so Kids that was crying. pissed off number one so then when i'm like trying to watch the movie i couldn't even adjust because it was so blurry so that's how i just walked out and the manager was like oh well we're giving out passes i said you can give me a pass but i want my money back <laughs> i don't yeah. give a, i don't give a fuck about a pass right now like give me my money back and we need our money back for the popcorn and a drink I was shocked at that. I didn't know they was going to do that, but, you know, what else can you do? Well, I was angry, so they better have did something. I, they, they did it for everybody. <laughs> I mean, I know, but that's because the people behind me, like, started the trend, too, because they were like, oh, well, we want our money back, like, for that, too, because first, the first manager was saying that they couldn't do that. I said, well, where's another manager that really? can? Yeah, the one I was standing downstairs, like, how we how are we supposed to enjoy popcorn in a movie, and the movie don't work? Yeah. You know? So, no. I would be like, well, back. man, you ate the popcorn. Okay, well, that's why you're not the manager. <laughs> um, and then Friday, I don't know what happened, but I sounded ugly. Like, I cannot breathe. Disgusting. My throat was hurting. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what was happening. But, um, yeah, so that was Friday night. But then Saturday, we went to brunch. That was cute. It was a really nice place. The food was really good. The sangria was bomb. Lighting was bomb. Restaurant reviews coming soon. Yes. Um, <laughs> Lighting was bomb. Okay. Pancakes was bomb. The pancakes were really good. They were all right. I kind of wish that I My gravy just got was really the, good. Uh, biscuits and gravy. Oh, like I got, yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. It was pretty good what I got. Um, and then Sunday. Who child. Sunday. Apparently, I was flashing my titties in people's faces on apparently, Sunday. Apparently. This is what Girl. people were telling me. From looking at the videos on my phone, it seems pretty accurate. <laughs> You know what? I, I can't post everything. <laughs> I volunteer as tribute um, to be the sober person because I feel no, like I First of all, it. I'm always the most so- sober out of everybody. Yeah. Okay. Since when? Since always, my nigga. What are you Since talking about? When? I cannot recall. I'm always drinking cranberry juice the whole second half of the turn up. You get your little splash of Malibu and you be like. <laughs> no, I always drink before I go anywhere. First of all. 
So how you sober? Which one is it? I dance it off at the place. Okay. But I had like a lot to like I had a lot to drink before we went and I drank on an empty stomach, which I normally don't do, which is why I feel like I got drunk so quick. But I was really acting like a tiger in my tiger dress. Yes, you kept making us take <laughs> <laughs> We were the cheetah girls, y'all. I don't know. Minus me. I had on the tiger. But I had on red lipstick. I had my red nails, my red glasses, my she cat was ears. herself. I y'all. had people hugging me because they thought I was cute. And I didn't even know these people. But it was nice. Oh, my gosh. Shut up, Dro. That's the best I did. Did you not see even me? So it was like, oh my gosh, she was oh, so fangirling girl. over you, and I was like, I don't that even know cute. her. You probably she was know cute. Her. I don't know her. She, I don't, I don't know her. Mm. She like, she would tell you, I don't know her. But um, <laughs> she smelled he fermented fruit. Silly. He said he's agreeing me. He said she smelled fermented fruit, and she Shut lit all of a sudden. That's how it works. I'd be like, uh, it's Malibu. No, I'd be drinking hella other shit. Like as of recent, I've been drinking a lot of tequila because of y'all. That's my new thing. And yeah. I've been drinking a lot of dark liquor mm-hmm. recently, too. So, no. Yeah, no. Um, but I'm actually going to retire. I kind of felt it in my soul. Like, when we were at Brunch to Mom, even I had, like, I had, like, three shots. And that's usually what will put me over the edge. But it didn't. We and had I drinks just, upstairs. Somebody, uh, the the person brought us drinks. I was there. We had a drink upstairs. Yeah. Right, I know. So, oh, just yeah. like, I, I did, think that's what did it. I, I drank it too fast, it too. Because... I only had that drink for a short period of time with it. But yeah. Yeah, we could. I, no, Shana, you don't. I, I'm the one that was sober. OK, I remember. I finished drinking my drink downstairs. I had no, it on the not. elevator with me. Oh, OK. You're right. You're right. <laughs> you're right. I'll but I that. was drunk. <laughs> no, it's because she was telling us to go back because I she thought she was, was talking no, about she the was saying she was we just, No, she was just saying we couldn't go downstairs. Yeah. Like they had the stairs off or whatever. But anyways, I had fun at Brunch to Brum. Shout out to Adrian and Ben of Brunch yeah. to Brum. I had Love a lot of fun. Shout out to DJ Artistic. Yes. Okay. He definitely did his thing. He Shout did. out to him. He, he followed us on Instagram today. Oh, no, I saw that. All of um, But yeah, no, he did. He did a he did a great job. Um, my knees are broken, and my legs feel like I have walked up and down the Cover City stairs three times. So yeah, I'm gonna have to take a break. Yeah, you were doing a lot of. If you guys want to see a snippet cool. of the Tim recap Blair, of what took Tim place Blair, at Brunch to Bomb, Tim you can Blair. go on our Never Not Extra page. You will see one of our, what do you call the memory stories? Yeah. Um, it'll say B2B Lion King, and you'll see us all dressed in animal print and twerking and you might see, maybe a few nip slips. <laughs> you might see a short, light-skinned young lady. That was not me. Oh, uh, okay. Just, just no. some, uh, yo, uh, <laughs> would they call it a doppelganger? Yeah, it wasn't me. Oh, okay. It wasn't me. That's funny. Anyway. I'm mad that Keith really tried to play my life, but yeah. whatever. It's cool. Shout out to Ashley. Hey, Ashley. She said, hey, ladies. Hey, Michael, our faithful listener every love you week. so much. Ray, we love you. Thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. It's not a show without y'all. Uh- <laughs> Did we just accept an award? What just happened? <laughs> if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. No, I'm kidding. Um, okay. All right. So Bye, yeah, Jackie. Shout out, out to Ladies Night. Shout Jackie, out to Ladies Night. Every, Jackie, let me tell Jackie's you something about in the building night. right now. She's getting ready to leave, but shout She's out to Ladies Night. Us. They are on every Friday on the Good News Radio at 7 30 p.m. It gets real. Thank you. We love it does you. get real. Yes, love you it too. Gets real. Bye. Bye. Be safe. Um, yeah, so what's something from your life that you had to, you felt like you had to rebirth and rebuild from? Um, maybe my um, engagement. Uh oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Tell us more. <laughs> what? <laughs> um I I don't even want to okay, I don't even know like where to really start with that, but I just kind of feel like when you're like in a situation, you kind of got to mm-hmm. like once you're in a situation for so long, you have to relearn yourself. Mhm. And I feel like I had to, like, rebirth myself because it was so much stuff that I thought I knew because I thought I was grown and Mm -hmm. I wasn't. But then I had learned so much about myself being in that situation where it was just like I had to, like, I had to relearn myself Mm -hmm. in order to, like, move on to other things. I feel it. I feel it. Um, Ooh. I didn't know you was going to go the relationship route. I mean, 
I, I mean, that's that's really one of the only times I've really had to rebirth myself. I was going to go the financial route, but okay, I could do that too. But let's start with a relationship route. Um, so I don't have any exes, obviously. You know, never, <laughs> never fucked with these niggas. I'm just kidding. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, but that's I actually okay. Whatever. This is not my main rebirth. Okay. Um, but I will say that something that I had to rebirth. Um, and rebuild from something that I had to rebirth and rebuild from was um a relationship that I had that didn't work out. Uh, can I turn the music back on? This yeah. is not <laughs> this is not a sad story, but like you really seem just like because you're in huh? real thought right here. Oh no no no! Because I'm trying to like figure it out. Because in my mind, I I always put it past me like. I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't give a fuck, bitch. You don't give a fuck, you know? Mm-hmm. But I did have to rebuild from it because I was like, it's kind of sad. I don't know. It's like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to give it its truthfulness, but I'm not trying to like make myself sound away, I guess. But basically, <laughs> but, but it's so funny how you get over things faster than you realize that mm-hmm. you would because once you snap back into your regular life mm-hmm. it's like oh shit like I don't know and every time that I've had like a breakup my life gets more lit I don't know what that is when me and your friend used to date um you dated my friend uh you know him you knew him before you knew me oh okay you know who I'm talking about okay. um when we broke up we broke up uh, like the beginning of the summer that summer I had the best summer of my life I was everywhere doing everything and it's just so funny how it's like even though that's something sad it when you rebuild and you go back into your life it's like this shit is lit like I don't know maybe it's like compensating for the um the sadness that you were in Mm -hmm. and like you overcompensate with like oh let me turn up but it worked and I had like the best <laughs> fucking summer he was even like dang you be everywhere <laughs> that's yes. funny yes. well I mean hey I was pretty lit after my little situation too so I guess it's, it's all about a, you feel free mm-hmm. and you're just and your your spirit is is lifted afterwards yes. Although in sadness it's just like I don't have to worry about this now I just only gotta worry about me no once that snaps I'm like, wait a minute. I don't really fuck with this nigga anyway. Yeah. Wow. I don't have to like, I don't have to like wonder where they are. I don't have to like, no, I'm free. Real <laughs> ass bitch. Give a fuck. I don't know about know. all that. but <laughs> <laughs> um, If you guys are just now joining us, uh, the topic of the show is the rebirth and the rebuild. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the guest in today. Um, but we do want to make sure we still feature their story and um, talk about some of the things that they went through. Um, yeah. Yeah. What's one other thing? Because I got another rebirth story before we get into um, the ladies from Life After the Fed story. Um, I don't really know. I don't think I really. I don't know if it's something that like I don't even know if I feel like really getting that deep, actually. Nope. I really don't. I really don't feel like getting that deep. Oh my god, I'm gonna sock you. I really I, okay. It's just I don't know. I can't, I can't think. I've been through so many different things in my life, so mm-hmm. I'm just kind of like trying to think of what I would like to share. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually did not expect for you to ask me that question either, because I would have been a little more prepared. Mm-hmm. We gonna revisit um, it because we got a we got a similar show uh, coming up in a few weeks where we talk about um we <laughs> we talk about the rebirth uh through fitness. Through fitness, and we're gonna have some people. Some um, we're gonna have our guy Teddy come in talk about how he lost weight and how that changed him as a person. We're gonna talk about personal trainers Justin and um, Jonathan. Uh, they're gonna talk with us about how they they feel about fitness and how it can better yeah. you and how they can help people that way. But um, um, I guess one one way I could talk about like rebirth is um, me like changing. Um, certain things like I don't I don't know um 
like I used to be a part of this church and I was like really, really, really heavily involved. But then I felt like I wasn't being fed spiritually anymore. Mm-hmm. And I had to like just completely like find a new church to go to. Mm-hmm. Like I church hopped for a while. And um, it's kind of like when you when you decide like, OK, like people think like, oh, when you're a Christian or when you get baptized, like all of a sudden your life changes. But that's not really how it goes. And I've learned that when I pray for a lot of things, I'm instantly being tested. Mm hmm. And I'd be like, you know what? I actually didn't mean to pray for that. Let's just do something else, yeah. you know? But I found that the more I avoid certain things, the more they pop up when I'm on a cool, like, you know, I'm going, I'm going. And then all of a sudden things will just like pop up. And it's that same thing that I had to go through, but I just tried to turn around and go another way. But oh I my literally God. have to just like go Nigga. through it. Like eventually I have to go through it and I have to learn and I you try to avoid to. it at every cost. You have to. So or God um, gonna be like you thought. Yeah. And that was again. and that was me being in the middle of like rebuilding rebuilding myself back up um spiritually, you know, because um I went through times where it's just like I felt like I wasn't worthy of stuff, um, or like I I would think that people didn't really genuinely care about me because of their actions and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I went through this whole stage of learning to love myself first. Oh, this music going perfect with this. (laughs) I know for real. And it, and it was just, and, and I understood that, um, me, me loving, me loving myself enough helped me to be able to make, um, clear sound mind decisions about, specific people that I was either dating in a mm. relationship with mm-hmm. or even in friendships with. How old were so, you when you had this Um 22. Mm-hmm. That's 22. Good. Um, and um, I still have to go through it now. And this is what I try to get people to understand is that if I'm dealing with you on a friendship level or a relationship level or whatever, I'm actually choosing to deal with all that comes with you. So if I come to you and I'm talking to you about something and I'm trying to express something to you, it's because I'm choosing to still be in the situation. Mm-hmm. And and that's one thing I, I would like for people to know about me. Like if I don't fuck with you, you definitely gonna know, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And every, every person that I have in my life, I'm choosing to let them stay in my life. Mm-hmm. And, that was that was something that I had that was a that was a confidence that I had to build about myself mm-hmm. and I and it's a great feeling to not have to need somebody to love you enough because then it's just like if you lose that person although it'll hurt you'll be able to get through it because you loved yourself first mm-hmm. you can't expect somebody to love you more than what you love yourself you're never going to be fulfilled it's a whole nother difference when you're not dependent on other people yeah it's a whole nother difference where you're like oh you want to be around? Cool. You don't want to be around? I'm still good. Yeah. Yeah. That's a wonderful, like, empowering feeling to have. And not everybody has that. Some people walk around as empty cups for people to be feeling like. Yeah. You, you know what song that just popped cup. in my head? LMA. Even though I'm good without you, I'm fucking with you regardless. That's the song that's in my head. You love LMA. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about that. I mean, I like her. I like, like some of her songs, but. Uh-huh. I saw this beautiful caption on this couple's picture, and it was like, um, it was a picture of them together, and it was like, I like I water you, you water me, we overflow from the da, da da da. That's awesome. It was so beautiful. I was like, oh my god. You should be any relationship that you have, friendship or it in, should be or in actual relationship. Top. Somebody should be watering you. Facts. So I, I heard this on another podcast before. They said your meat and potatoes. Okay, mm-hmm. your meat and potatoes. A relationship is the gravy. Mm-hmm. Meat could be juicy as hell. Mm-hmm. Potatoes could be fluffy as hell. The gravy makes it better, but you could do without it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's but I feel like that wasn't a great analogy because I'd be thinking like gravy. I'm like, yes, oh my God, gravy honey. on there. Then <laughs> shout out to Danny in the comments. He said, "Rebirth of decision making and approach." Becoming more confident and authentic. For example, remember being in the third grade, knowing the answer to the question the teacher asked, and you didn't say shit at all. Mm. Mm. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I like that. Rebirth of decision making and approach. Mm -hmm. That's important in life, especially as an adult. Rebirth of decision making? Yeah. I wanted to touch on something that you said earlier about accepting. uh, What did you say earlier about believing people and accepting things? Um, accepting everything that comes with them. 
Oh, okay. You meant it like a different way because I was gonna get because I'm low key like right now. I'm in the middle of a rebirth, and I and I tell all my friends about it. Um, and I think that y'all can see, uh, my rebirth happening. Mm -hmm. Um, but basically, one thing that I noticed about myself is that I don't when things are given to me or when people go out of their way, I my instinct is to refuse it. Mm -hmm. It's to be like, no, I'm not worthy. Like, stop it. Mm -hmm. No, don't do it. You know, that's why every birthday I get major anxiety because I'm like, fuck, I don't want to, you know, ask these people to celebrate with me. Like, I, you know, and, and and what is that for what? Why am I not worthy? But at the same time, when it's somebody else's birthday, I'm going all out. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, this weekend, I was tired. But you know that I was going to be there for every single um, event that Jameez wanted us to come to because yeah. I ride for my friends, you know, and that's yeah. what they deserve. So it's like, why can't I um, have that same energy towards myself? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But that's a habit that I'm starting to break. You know, it's like when people I would appreciate it if you break it. Because I'd be tired of arguing with you. About what? Give me an example. Everything. Like how you tried to pay on your birthday or like when we all tried to do like, oh, no, 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 no. It's okay. Like, I got it. Like, nigga. Like, we already said this is what we doing. Like, I don't understand, like, why I have to debate with you to do something for you. I know. I know. I it's really be wanting to, like, sock you in your boot. Like, hard. I know. And, you know, some people, like, actually get offended by that. I.e. my grandma. You know, if she... First of all, I do stuff for her because you're my grandma and I'm supposed to. You know, like, mm -hmm. I'm supposed to check on you. I'm supposed to go to the store for you. She'll, like, be like, oh, no, here you go. Here's some money. And I'll be like, no. Like, no. And she get really offended, like because she's older. Older yeah. people get really offended when you. It's like, like refusing food from them. Yeah, she's like, "Don't do that to me." <laughs> so she's, she I'm scared like, of your grandma. She's yo. like, "Don't do that to she me." She little, but I'm scared of her. Her eyes are very piercing, and it seemed yeah. like she could probably still shank me up real good if she wanted to. She probably would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My grandma's like four nine with like changing color eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm scared of her. She a thug. She, she a real like, gangster. She a real G. Shout out to Miss Jenkins. She a real gangster. Yeah. But um no, that's that's part of my uh rebirth right now. That's unfolding. It's I'm proud it's of fucking you. like it's not all rainbows and sunshine. Sometimes another thing that I'm rebuilding is my teeth. <laughs> 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 that is funny because clearly you can't talk. I can't talk you when But that's why. because they're tightening them right they now. They are right. They okay. they close in uh I'm gonna start an orthodontist podcast, y'all, and I'm gonna tell y'all all about everything. So they closing the gaps and they pulling it in so my tongue is having like less room to move. <laughs> so excuse me if I trip over it. That's funny. Yes. But um That was a great that was a lot of swallow. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but any, anyway, guys, I want to take you to the inspiration behind our show. And I definitely wanted to, stay, to share the story um, of these women who are part of the organization called Life After the Feds. Do um, you want to read their bio? Yeah. Um, so, give me one second. How do you say second in Spanish? I was about to about say to segundo, say, but that's not I was going to say segundo, but that is not it either. No, segundo means something else. It means... El segundo. It actually means something in Spanish, but I can't remember what it means. Whatever. I'll tell you in the, like, the change or some crap. I know Spanish, so oh, okay. I'll tell you. Okay, if that's what you want to say. I think it was <laughs> like second. I don't know. Like second. Like It does. Yeah, it means the second. Because it's like PCH, and PCH is It one. does mean the second. You were right. Oh, my God. I'm so It sorry. does mean the second. Okay, whatever. Um, so the name of this um, foundation is called Life. It's called the Life After Foundation. It's a nonprofit organization. Um, and their bio says, Life After Foundation was created to empower and encourage formerly incarcerated individuals as they transition back into the community. Nice. Love it, love it, love it. Um, especially... Um, even though the story is a little bit opposite, but the uh, Central Park Five um, with how they had issues with rehabilitating, I think it's really important. And I don't know a lot about the life or the limitations that comes with mm -hmm. um, rehabilitating after incarceration, but um, definitely great that these women are sharing their story and helping others um, by sharing their stories who are in the same situation, <laughs> who are in the same situations as they were. Okay, but um, I'm going to read their personal story. So um, 
yeah, I, I'm going to read a little bit of that because I thought it was really inspiring. Um, <clears throat> so one of the young ladies, her name is Tiash, T. Tiache, I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. She says, um, <clears throat> I am a native of Watts, California. I have seen my share of war and poverty in the ghetto. When I was growing up, I didn't know the life I was born into was poverty and street violence. I thought it was a normal way of life. Growing up, I was physically, mentally, and emotionally abused, unloved, and abandoned. I suppressed my feelings and internalized so much hurt and pain. Outwardly, I became someone different. No one really knew uh, the real me, life in these streets. I had to fight and fight and shield myself from love and pain. Shielding herself from love and pain when I so desperately wanted to be loved and happy. And she said, this made me become angry, sad, and at times heartless. I wanted a family, my family. I had no one, so I turned to the streets and joined a gang. My gang became my family. I was finally accepted. I wanted, I was finally accepted, wanted, and loved. At the age of 12, I started a vicious cycle of incarceration. I went from juvenile hall to juvenile prison and ultimately to the feds due to drugs and gang activity. I hated confinement, but it never stopped me from going back. I cheated death on many occasions. I endured and had to overcome so much. I did not know what my purpose here uh, was at times. I questioned God. I was lost. I had to learn how to cope and learn self-discipline. Life after the feds. I am on a mission to understand, accept, love, happiness, and gain success. I have learned. I have to learn how to love myself and others, and it's still a struggle. The one thing I know about myself is whatever I set out to do, I always accomplish my mission. Wow. Um, what do you think of her story? That's deep. Mm -hmm. I think that um, what kind of stuck out to me is the fact that she grew up uh, through the cycle of abuse thinking that it was like a normal life. And that happens to a lot of people. That's a normal thing to people that are um, abused. It becomes a normal way of life, especially when it happens from such a young age and when people don't talk to you or explain it to you. Yeah, and it sounds like she was was not looking to... um, be violent like the source the 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 seed of what she wanted was to have a family and feel mm-hmm. love and the only way that she was able to feel that was from a gang that she joined and that in turn you know led to her incarceration um and that happens mm-hmm. that happens like uh, i know a lot of um i know a lot of people who feel like um their gang family or whatever family that they gain outside of their family is more so their family than their actual family because of what they go through the turmoil and all all those type of things that they go through with their actual blood family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, that happens. It's so wild to me that like people could have children and look at them and not want to like give them everything and love them. Like, but you have, so what you have to think about is you have to think about cycles that haven't been broken though. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. um, I get it. There are some parents that don't do things the right way, but did their parents do things the right way? Are they just a product of their environment? I like, see that you know, firsthand. somebody has to be the one to break the cycle. And communication is a is a big way to break that cycle because um, and then even like just taking the time to heal yourself and seek counsel. We talk about it all the time, like how black people don't think that they need therapy. But well, I feel like black does. people I feel like black people need it more than anybody, honestly. Yeah, because we have unique circumstances. Yeah. Um, and I feel like all of that is important because you can tell somebody that you love them all day long, but people are going to more so remember your actions over your words. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I feel like that's, uh, that's very important. I feel like healing in the black community is very important to be able to break those cycles and do the things that need to be done to, um, save ourselves, you know, and to be able to overcome all the, all the things that we already have to overcome with just being black and yeah. living here. Yeah. It's so sad that like. It's scary thinking about having kids and the ways that you might fuck them up by some stuff that you haven't healed from yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, That's true. I want to read... You watch, um, sorry, you watch Euphoria? Or you haven't watched it yet? What? Euphoria. What is that? The show on HBO that I was telling you about was in Daya? No. Okay, like every episode is like... It goes through a person's life. And can you true. text it to me so I can remember to look yes, at it? Yes, please watch it. Do you have HBO? Yes. Okay. So I could definitely watch it. Yeah. We have Michael in the comments. Shout uh, out to Michael. I hope y'all watch Euphoria. That show is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Apparently I'm the only one that doesn't know about it. Nah, it's a dope show. It's with Zendaya and she be acting. Okay. It's like. Who's Zendaya? Zendaya. Oh. Yeah. It's her. Um, 
I'm not going to name the other actors, but um, <laughs> they don't matter. <laughs> no, but it's like a mix of Degrassi and. Um, oh, OK. Yeah. And I'm about like, to start watching Degrassi from the beginning. Thir- nigga, I started that. I got I forgot what happened, but every episode is on YouTube for free. Oh, I'm going to watch it. Yes, please do. But I'll look I'll look into um, is it Euphoria? You. I really can't talk, huh? Euphoria. Euphoria. Yeah, okay. like the feeling that you get it. after you take drugs. Because yeah. she's a drug addict on the show. It's really fucking good. I'm going to look at it. Yeah. I'm going to look at it. Um, I want to read Francine's uh, story. She goes by Teddy B. Mm-hmm. Um, her story says, um, my name is Francine Williams. Um, I was born in a small country in Central America named Belize. Hey, Belize. You believe me? Um, I have Belizean family. Um, mm-hmm. My mother and I uh, migrated to Los Angeles, California when I was four years of age, followed by my father a few years later. My mother was a stay-at-home wife and my father was a truck driver. My parents and I had a great relationship during the early years of my childhood. My parents later had three more daughters and life was pretty good, but in my story, that didn't last long. At the age of 12, I find myself being exploited by my father. As a child, this was very hard for me to understand why this was happening to me it was a very difficult time in my life i was forced to grow up fast because life showed me the worst side of the world at an early age when my mother got wind of what was happening she did not believe me or should i say she did not want to believe me from that moment on my relationship with my mother was never the same i began to act out and rebel because because i was hurting inside but refused to acknowledge the pain i started experiencing experiment uh, I, but I refused to acknowledge the pain I started experimenting with drugs and made some bad decisions as I took a first class trip on life's downward spiral my presence was no longer wanted and I was forced to leave home I slept on couches floors and even in cars then eventually dropped out of high school in search of a place to call home I desperately searched for love and a sense of family that I no longer had At the age of 19, I was finally able to get my own place. I was content but still longing for a relationship with my mother. However, with my father still in the picture, that seemed unrealistic. I later found out that my mother was fighting breast cancer, and at that moment, I became a second mother to my siblings, as well as a new mother to my own child. I was overwhelmed and could not seem to make ends meet the way I wanted. My mother lost her fight with breast cancer and passed away. I was devastated but had to be strong for my sisters. I just wanted them to be happy again and to be their light during a dark time. Meanwhile, I can I continued to suppress my emotions. That's when a financial opportunity presented itself to me that I felt would fix all of my problems. Money began to flow and everything seemed to be all good until the feds raided my house. I found myself on a federal indictment and in an even worse situation than I was in prior. I was locked up and away from the little family I had with no means to support them. This was a lesson that had to be learned. I didn't grow up having positive role models. I grew up having examples of what I didn't want to be like and seeing situations I'd never want to be in. Not all of us are dealt the right cards, but that doesn't mean you can't reshuffle your deck for a better outcome. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. um, I've learned to love and forgive, which has not been easy for me. I'm still picking up the pieces little by little. God has truly blessed me with a second chance to do things differently. And I'm so grateful to share my story. Life hasn't always been fair to me, but I will forever keep my head up and my words sweet. Life after the feds. Life after the feds. No, that was a really. That's crazy. It's so crazy. Like how I said, the root of both of their stories is like, I wanted to feel loved. Mm hmm. I wanted to feel loved. And and for Francine, it was more so like I wanted to be able to take care of them. And this is the only way that I know how. Mm -hmm. So then you have lack of love, lack of family, lack of resources, lack of knowledge Mm -hmm. that are leading these people into the life that they end up turning into. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know a few people that um, that have been incarcerated, whether it be like jail or prison and um it's really they make it really hard for you to adapt back into society. Mm-hmm. All the rules and regulations after you get out of a certain situation, um, it's still like you're in jail. You're just not behind bars. Like you're still in prison. You're just not behind bars. Yeah, it's wild. And I think it's really sad. Like niggas really be on house arrest. I saw somebody at brush. I know this is like totally off subject, but I saw somebody with a house arrest blanket at uh, 
bracelet at Brush Two Bomb. Did you see him? No. I was like, hey man, you have your fun. You deserve it. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. But it happens. And even when it comes to like um people like being on parole and all the rules and regulations that like, you know, um come with that. It's like it's crazy. It's like it's still nonstop. You still have somebody constantly hounding you. You're still not really free. There's mm-hmm. still a whole bunch of things that you cannot do. It's just that you don't have to sit in your cell anymore. Mm-hmm. You're I mean, out that in the is world, but still have stipulations. Yeah. And don't they make it sometimes like where you can't communicate with certain people? Yes, that's all the time. Really? Most of the time, like felons are not supposed to communicate with other felons. I wonder how that works out when they when it's a job that actually hires felons. You can't work there if there's another like you. you that's that's really why wild. I said it makes it, they think that it you, makes it really hard. That's really wild. It makes it really hard. I don't know what the purpose of that is. Like that's that's somebody like a a person because some people get felonies. It's not even like huge like you know things, but somebody having like the same background or experience as you that seems like something that you should be able to talk about with somebody who can experience that you can't talk you can't talk about that with somebody that's never experienced it you know what I mean not saying that oh we all just need to be like you know friends or whatever but I'm just saying I just feel like it's a done rule it's important for uh, when you go through something and somebody else goes through something as well it's important for you to connect with that person yeah like that's how girls build bonds you know yeah that's how I, men build bonds. I understand. Yeah. yeah. I, I totally agree That's with that. That's how black people like... build bonds with each other. Because what do we do? We talk about the shit that we grew up on. You know? Um, I mean, I, not that they have to bond over that. I know what you know, mean, but it's just over. like, it's just, it's easier when somebody actually understands you. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually want to get into um, the trending topic, spending, uh, speaking of like still being imprisoned. Yes. Um, before we get into that, um, I would like to shout out our sponsors for this week. Yes. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> um, our first. What are you doing? I'm, I'm doing stuff. I knew you was about. To, I knew you was about to do something because you looked like so sneaky. I was looking like a little ass kid. That's okay. funny. Um, so our first sponsor um for this week. <laughs> getting comfortable with the sounds <laughs> our first sponsor for this week um goes to drum roll please flower and sugar ooh, ooh! <laughs> ooh, that was, that was a little oh raspy. my gosh um <laughs> flower and sugar custom cakes um is by our girl danny um if you um have not been able to find a I can't even think of the word like a strategically well put together cake, cupcake, banana pudding. Let cake me tell pop. y'all something about this banana pudding. <laughs> <laughs> <She made it. laughs> Danielle made it for my birthday and I was so bomb. Like, I'm glad you loved it. It was delicious. Um, this girl has literally takes the time to perfect her craft um there has literally been times where i've asked her to make a cake for me where she wasn't even sure if she can make it and Mm -hmm. i give her a vision and it comes to life yes um shout out to her because she actually made a cake for my dad's 50th birthday it was so dope um i'm gonna i'm gonna post the picture on our insta story so you guys can see it um i literally told her a vision i texted to her i said hey I want a credit card and I wanted to have these numbers. I wanted to have this logo and I wanted to say this. And when I saw the cake, I wanted to fall the fuck out because I didn't know it's what like, the hell was going on. how did she making the logo? I don't know. I don't know She's how the so fuck talented. she does it. She I is. fuck with it. I, um, I appreciate her, her for really taking her time and perfecting her craft. Uh, that shows me somebody that's really passionate about it and somebody that's passionate about it knows how to make. The, the cakes don't just look good. They actually fucking taste good. So shout this out is, to her. This is actually real, y'all, because I don't even like cake. But when it be, I don't function, either. No, when we what, what was it that we was at Jackie House and then it was like the Good News Awards oh, yeah. and stuff. And I was like, I don't even like cakes, but I was at that table fucking up all the cake. That's pops. funny. <laughs> um, if you want to find um, Flower and Sugar on Instagram, it is underscore Flower, as in like the actual flower that you cook with F L O U R and Sugar. 
um, spelt out just like that with another underscore at the end. We'll also post her on um, our Insta story. Um, so that way you can see it. She is located in Los Angeles. Um, so hit her up. Um, any event that you're looking for, any design that you're looking for, I can almost guarantee um, that she can do it. And I'll let you um, also see. Um, you guys will also see her page and see all the great and incredible things that she's done. And so shout out just, to her. If you just want to be a fatty and just order some banana pudding for yourself. She got that, that part. Too that part yep. um so shout out to flour and sugar for sponsoring us thank you so much mm-hmm. um and our um we have another sponsor who also has been sponsoring us <laughs> for two other weeks now one. um shout out to the game is dirty ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um he okay so he has been sponsoring us for like three weeks now this is his third week sponsoring us Mm -hmm. um really 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 truly appreciate it Mm -hmm. um i've already told you guys where you can find him you can find him at the game is dirty on instagram you can also find his clothing in the delama mall in a store called focus is on us it is on the second floor of the mall um on the new side going towards nordstrom's Mm -hmm. um and um, I don't know if you guys know, I know that some of you that have um, looked at the page and that have um, seen online, you you everybody's been see, seeing the same crime shirt. Why are you laughing? <laughs> because of the ooh ooh. And oh. Keith, Keith just loves that. I know. <laughs> um, so um, a lot of you guys have been seeing the same crime shirt. So just so you guys know, there has been a post, uh, a, pic, a few pictures posted with LeBron and Kaepernick wearing the same crime shirt. Those are fake photos. That is a person and like being an imposter for the game is like on the game is dirty. Um, the game is dirty is the original maker of that shirt. If you Google it, that is the only shirt that you should buy. You should not be buying it on Amazon. You should not be buying it on any Instagram site. It is only purchase the original shirt on at the game is dirty.com or if you uh, DM them on Instagram. He is the mm-hmm. original maker of that shirt. Yep, yep. Um, so don't believe these imposters. <laughs> yeah but shout out to Get him you some real shit yes but shout out to him um and um once again thank you so much for sponsoring us for this week um thank you so i have a trending topic too after you okay cool so one of my trending topics um if you guys um are up on game with centoya brown um centoya brown is the 16 year old girl who was solicited um for sex um, and in the end, the, the man who was soliciting her ended up dead. Um, and she ran away and ended up going to prison for it. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, Centoya Brown is set to be released from prison after serving 15 years in less than a month. Mm-hmm. She is now 31 years old. She was originally sentenced to a 51 year term after a crime that she committed as a 16 year old. When the 43 year old man solicited her for sex for $150 at some point, the man Johnny Michael Allen was killed during their encounter in January and she was granted clemency and will be released on August 7th, 2019. Um, and she will have to be on parole for 10 years following her release. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm happy that she's getting out. However, I don't understand why people have to be on parole for so many years. Mm-hmm. I wonder what's the stipulations of her parole. Like, can she not leave? Because stipulations state? are different, yeah, for sure. But still, it's just like I feel like she served her time. I get it. Like a guy is like dead, but the stuff that they were saying he did to her, like I probably would have killed him too to get away. Like yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I just feel like. If she weren't a brown woman, that that situation would have went different. It would have went like self-defense or mm-hmm. something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that's just the only thing that I don't. Um, that's just the only thing that I don't really appreciate about that. So um, I don't know. I'm glad that she's getting out. I just feel like it's excessive to do the 10 years parole. Is That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. 10 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you guys don't know, she I think people started catching wind of her i don't know if it was like a netflix documentary or um hbo i Some, forgot something some yeah, type of documentary kind of like uh told her story and everything mm-hmm. and that's the thing that i love about um like entertainment now it's like yeah. you're highlighting these stories and now we're like okay we care about this shit we're about to get angry yeah you know same with like um the central park five um the who else 
I can't remember a lot of names, but I remember. Oh, Adnan Saeed. Are you familiar with that story? I believe so. I believe so. Um, And it was a few stories I sent you to this guy that had like served like 50 something, like had served like 50 years or 30 years. And he was like just now getting out. Too. And he got exonerated. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just because he didn't do it. But it's just like, it's yeah. crazy. Like, to me, there's no amount of money that you can pay me that will give me that time back. Like, people it's pass away. You miss birthdays. Time like is more valuable than anything. And even when you're exonerated of something, people still treat you a yes. certain way. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because you've been put in a situation for something yeah. that you never Either did. Either because they low-key believe it or they feel some type of way about you because you've been to prison. Right. And that's that's very sad. It's heartbreaking. That's very sad. Yeah. So but, shout out to Centoya for being um, able to be released. Yeah, and, I know a lot of people um, were fighting for her. I'm yeah. For her. Um. I mean, it sucks that she has to be on on parole for ten years. But like you said, I get. I mean, it's better than being inside. But it's still. I just still feel like it's just a scam. It's still imprisonment. It's just you're not in a cell anymore. Mm-hmm. You know. Thanks. Um. So I have another trend of topic. Okay. Kind of related. Um. Shayna said she's not familiar with this song, but I'm gonna play a little clip for you. I don't know um, this. Oh, I do know this song. I never listened to the words. Now, I ain't gonna lie, I used to bang this song. Uh, I, heavy. Yes, I, yeah. Is that how I, you know it? Yeah, probably. Okay, yeah, I used to definitely bang that heavy. But I didn't know the backstory, you know, of all the shit that's happening. But um, if you guys have been paying attention to in, in the news and following um, TK's story, that was rapper TK. He's so young. I don't know how, he, um, let's see how old he is. He is 21. Okay. He is, um, oh no, I'm sorry. The person that was, that died was 21. He's 19 and he looks every bit of 15 years old. Okay. And he made the song. I don't know if you guys heard the lyrics, but it's like, I was trying to be the case. I didn't beat the case. I did the race. And that's some true shit because he, um, allegedly, this is what he's being sentenced for. He, um, organized a robbery and then ended up, people ended up dying. I don't know if it was at his hands or somebody else's hands, but either way, he's getting sentenced to 55 years Damn. in prison. Rapper TK was sentenced to 55 years in prison on Tuesday after being convicted of murder last week. The 19-year-old Texas rapper, Texas rapper, whose real name is Tamor McIntyre, was part of a home invasion in Mansfield that left 21-year-old Ethan Walker dead and another man injured in July 2016. He also received one 30-year and two 13-year sentences for aggravated robbery. They will be served con- concurrently with a 55-year sentence. Walker didn't have the money or drugs uh, Tay-K and his uh, accomplices were looking for. He was shot while his hands were in the air, witnesses said. Wow. So it's really wild. And I and I had tweeted this earlier. I'm like, it's it's a tragedy on all sides of that because people have died. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's lives lost there. There's his life lost because for what? <laughs> like they they didn't even have the shit that you wanted to steal. Mm-hmm. So now you are 19 years old. You're about to serve 55 years mm-hmm. in prison. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Yeah. Threw your whole life away. Yeah over a robbery yeah it's 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 really sad and i and i do it's fucked up it's fucked up i think it's tragic on all sides because your life is gone and i wonder how he feels about that song now like knowing that it was such a changing factor in his life for me i would never make a song about something that like literally someone lost their life in like i wouldn't make a song about a situation where um like somebody literally lost their life over something that you organized yeah you know what i mean and and i always think that young people are stupid (laughs) young people do really dumb shit yeah and like i said before some people become a product of their environment yeah and that's kind of what we were hitting on earlier of like the the way that these people i don't know i'm always intrigued by the way that these people turn to what they turn to 
because I'm pretty sure the root of it is like a lack of um, stability and support and love from your home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I think it has a lot to do with, um, I think it has a lot to do with, like I said, um, mental health too. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of people in certain areas, uh, specifically black areas Mm -hmm. that um, (laughs) they need a lot of mental help. I see it all the time. Yeah. I see it all the time. And um, I think, I think that is very important that um, all of us just continue to like, to to spread that love i think it's cool that um the girls who are doing the um the life after after the the feds foundation are actually sharing their stories and shedding some light on um different things that you can do to kind of like get back into the groove of things because there there are some people like you never know how similar your story is to somebody else yeah um you never know the impact i have a cousin that's been in and out of prison or jail since he was like 13 and the first time he went in he didn't even do anything it was just the fact that they picked him up when my aunt wasn't around and made him confess to certain things and sign certain things and they had already took him in without her knowledge and his court date continued to be pushed back never went to court for anything he just stayed in jail till his 20s and once he got out he's just always been going back in for something because it's like you still have all these stipulations and then you're in this certain environment where this is all that takes place so anybody yeah. that you're with or anything that you do you're gonna get sent right back it's easy to and it's and it's up. really and it's really sad because um it's really sad that that that's his situation like i feel like um people that are in his situation that um, grow up in that not, a lot of people feel more comfortable being in those environments it, they're they more, they're more comfortable with their element with being in jail that's where they feel more comfortable because that's where they grew up did you used to watch um orange is the new black yes i did used to watch it i haven't watched it in a long time though. um what's the girl's name danielle brooks who did she play on the show i don't know anybody she's like kind of chunky she's brown skin oh yeah, yeah, yeah i know who you're talking about what's her name on the show I don't remember, but I know who you're talking about. Tasty. Okay. Tasty. Do you, do you remember how, like, she got out and she was so used to... What season was this? Because I didn't watch it after season two. Nigga, you did not, you did not watch it after season two? Mm-mm. That's when all the good shit started to happen. Oh. Girl. Mm-mm. Go back and watch. Okay. I haven't watched the last You can tell seasons. me, though. You it's... won't spoil it for me. Thank you, Ray. Tasty. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, no, she had got out. Mm -hmm. And she like, um, you know how they do flashbacks of their life before prison or whatever. Yeah. But it's like she got out and she didn't feel comfortable. She felt like, well, what can I do? Like, I'm this old. And she like did something petty to get back in jail because that's where she wanted to be because she was scared. And I I just wonder how much that happens for people. I'm sure it happens a lot. I'm sure it happens a lot when you get because people are going to adapt to their environments. Mm -hmm. And when you when you go in a certain situation at a certain age, that's all you know. Mm-hmm. So for someone to go into jail at 13 or juvenile hall at 13, and then they just transfer you to jail and keep transferring you and transfer you, that's where you grew up. Yeah. This is the beginning of your teenage years. Yes. So now when you're out in this society, you don't know what's going on, mm-hmm. and you're paranoid Yeah. because you've been in a completely different environment yep. and now you have to try to adapt to something and there's nobody there to help you to help you adapt yeah or yeah. to get back into things yeah i'm just giving all the show shout out today man netflix need to run me my five dollars <laughs> it's another show i really enjoy uh like documentaries by i the see way. um and like docuseries so there's another show um where it uh tells a story of these juvenile girls in Indiana. Oh, I know what you're talking Indian- about. Indianapolis. You know what I'm talking about? I haven't about? watched the show yet, but I've seen it. Oh, it's Netflix, so, so good. It's so interesting. It broke my heart. There's one girl in there that, like, she did her time at the juvenile place, mm-hmm. but she doesn't have any family to be released to. So she just has to stay there as if it's like a foster care system. What? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It's so fucking heartbreaking. And so she has to basically stay there till she's 18. I think that, yeah, I, if I recall right, that's the story. So it's like, what is she supposed to think when she gets out? She's going to think, this is where I belong. This is where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Like, I don't have anybody to love me. I don't have anybody to support me. This is the life that I'm going to turn to. Did her family, like, pass away or was she already in foster care? I think, um, 
I don't know. I have to. I, it's been a while since I watched it. She wasn't in foster care. She was like being taken care of by some people in her family. And then like they just was like, nah. Dang. Yeah, I don't know. But I encourage people to watch that. It just and then it just fascinates me how. And I think that Orange is the New Black highlights this as well about how. Any of these people could be you. That's why I love when it does the flashbacks yeah. because they wasn't just these nasty, ugly people that were just evil and doing bad things in the world. They were fucking normal and yeah. they ran into some circumstances to where. And that happens. Yeah. That happens. I know some people who literally just got into like some fraud and they didn't know it was fraud. It was just like, but the money was good. Mm hmm. And it's not that they're bad people or did anything to harm anybody, but it's fraudulent. And it's, now you have to go to prison for it. Yeah. And it's crazy. Word to JT. It's crazy. <laughs> so silly. <laughs> it's crazy, though. It's crazy that that happens. And I think that's why um, I feel like it's in, it's important to try to um, keep yourself away from, like, certain environments and stuff like that and really, like, think about what it is that you're doing and know that, like, certain things can really look too good. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, but at the end of the day, I feel like everything is a learning situation Mm -hmm. and I don't feel like any, I know some people will say like, Oh, I regret this. Or, you know, I know some people that have been to jail and they regret going to jail, but I feel like it's still a, it's still a growing thing. It Mm -hmm. sucks to have to experience it, but every experience in every situation is a learning experience and a growing experience. So, um, I just I just don't think that anybody should um, should regret anything they go through. Um, But I I do want to um, end on somewhat of a positive note. I got a quote for us to end with, too. Cool. It's not mine is not really a quote. It's just something that's kind of like on my mind. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to um, challenge everyone to just really spread more love. Um, And I know people say that so lightly, but um, it just kind of made me think about that when I was just uh, sharing with you guys how the girl at brunch too, I'm like just randomly walked up to me and gave me a hug just because she liked how I looked. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, what if I would have rejected her and that girl was going through something? Yeah. She don't even know me. She was fangirling over yes. me as if like I was like somebody yeah. important. And if I would have just been like, girl, I don't know you yeah. like, you know, but instead like I embraced her and I yeah. like hugged her and stuff like that. To me, that's important. And I feel like, it's important for everybody. You can save, you can save a life where there be from suicide and you can also save a life where there be from them getting into some trouble because what people don't understand is a lot of kids, um, and, and young adults do stuff for attention. They're not doing something because they're a bad person or because they want to hurt other people. Mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of people do things and lash out because they want somebody to see them. They feel like they're, they feel like they're invisible. Mm-hmm. Um and just reading the girls' stories too, it seemed like they both just wanted love. Somebody was doing That's something the to them. You it. have somebody that doesn't believe you, or you have somebody where it's just like you're just going through the motions and nobody ever shows you any emotion. Yeah. That's hurtful. That's yeah. hurtful, and it can make you do things to make you end up in certain situations, whether you commit suicide mm-hmm. or you're doing some things that land you in trouble. And now it's just like, well, you know what? It's easier for me to be in trouble, mm-hmm. or it's easier for me to feel this way. Or this is what or I'm can, Yeah, or you can make people turn to drugs and things like that. I know a lot of people that have been on drugs in their life, and that's not the way to go because drugs only takes away the feeling temporarily. And mm-hmm. then now you've harmed your body, and you still have to deal with real life because after the drug is worn off, you either have to do it again or you, you now you're... You need to watch Euphoria. I you would like it. I, I'm going to watch it. Yeah. I'm going to watch it. But I just really want to challenge everyone um, that's listening to our show to really just like spare more love, like tell people that you love them more, check on your friends that you don't talk to all the time. And even when people are just like reposting like certain quotes and stuff like that, I pay attention to stuff like that. I'll hit up my friend in a minute. Like, Oh, you okay. You good. Like yeah. I get it. It's just a repost, but obviously you reposted it for a reason. Yeah. Something, something about that post triggered you to repost even it and to share just it. Let somebody know that you're there to talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think I'm really good at that. I let my friends talk to me about anything they want to talk about. I don't ever I don't ever make them feel like they're bothering me. And I've had friends call me. You yourself have called me three o'clock in the morning, and you know, <laughs> but you know I'm gonna answer. Yeah. You know I'm gonna answer. I'm not gonna I've always do that been, to you anymore. <laughs> no, it's fine. But I'm just saying, like I'm, I'm just always gonna be that friend, just because, like I know, I know what suicide looks like, and I know with 
what somebody getting into trouble looks like because oh, they're lashing out them. and and all that other stuff. No, I know that, oh. but I'm just saying, <laughs> far from just that, to clear it up, right? Far from that, but I'm just saying, like, I just feel like it's really important to constantly show a person love because you don't know if they're getting the love from somewhere else. You don't know if they even love themselves. That's my mission, and, 2019 and beyond, to show more love. And yeah. back to your example at brunch to bomb, there was another girl. She was really drunk. So me, Jamise, and um, Kirsten, we all had on leopard, and this girl had on oh, leopard yeah, too. Yeah, and she was like so happy to see us and she was like jumping in our picture and you know some girls would be like ah, I'm bitch move da, 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 da. She, but we, we have group pictures with her yeah, we got group <laughs> pictures and videos with her and um but her friend was like girl come on like trying to get her but mm-hmm. I was like no like she could take a picture with us and we yeah. kept seeing her and I gave her a hug and, and she was like it's nice meeting y'all but like yeah. no I love that especially um the world that we live in especially in LA with black women like we not in competition with each other we on each other's team you know right Period. And we all need to show more love. Period. Your yes. quote? You have a quote? I have a quote to end us out, you guys. Okay. It's um a quote by Mark Lawrence, uh, King of Thorns, <laughs> The Broken Empire. I don't know what that is. Wow. <laughs> but you read the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, we die a little every day. And by degrees, we're reborn into different men, older men, in the same clothes with the same scars. That's deep. We die a little every day. Shout out to Keith. He loves he loves death. <laughs> oh my god! I'm just kidding. He don't love. I death, really but. hate that he talks like that. Actually, <laughs> no. I'm honestly with me listening to um uh what was it called Monday Monday morning? Yeah, is it is it just called Monday morning? Mm-hmm. I am tripping. With me listening to Monday morning every morning, I'm getting a little more comfortable with you gonna die. Like, thank you, Keith. Thank you for making wow. me accept that. Wow. <laughs> um. But that's the thing. And people need to people need to realize that you die a little bit every day and you need to understand that it actually takes more energy to be ugly to a person than to just love them. Do you know how bad it sits with me when I'm mean to somebody? I don't like the feeling. Yeah, I know. Because you like bug me about it after it's like, I was mean. I'm just going to it's like it's done now, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's a person of character. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) But I, I don't, I, I definitely, I'm going to, I'm going to accept that challenge as well. I feel like I've been a lot more kind to people than I have been in the past just because of like my trust issues that I have. But I feel like I've been a lot more kind to people like since we've basically started this show. That's beautiful. I've built a lot of, I've built a lot of friendships that I never thought that I would build. And I've gotten to know um, a lot of people. And I appreciate those who have gotten to know me. A lot of people, a lot of people that know me on this radio station will say that I'm crazy too. Or that I'm an asshole or whatever. But at the end of the day, each one of them is always going to say that I'm a sweetheart. And they know that if anything happens to them, I'm showing, the fuck, I'm showing the fuck up. Sweet. I'm just Anybody <laughs> that knows me knows I'm showing up. If you're my friend and something's happening, like, you need me or whatever, like, I'm showing up. Mm-hmm. Like, that's me. So, spread love, guys. You can't be pushing men, though. You can't be pushing city boys off of What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> He ruined our video. I didn't yeah. even push him hard. I just gave I him a firm. I think he was drunk because he didn't even react. He and did. He was looking at me like a certain way. And he then he like, just like. He looked like he was away. feeling hurt, but he didn't. His feelings should be hurt because we were in the middle of a sacred girl's video. And he came and tried to grind on my friend. So I had to. And he came back and tried to grind on everybody else. I had too. to put some firmness on his chest and push him away. So he knew that it wasn't a game. <laughs> That's funny. I ain't going to hit you, but I'm going to put some firmness on your chest so you know it ain't a game. I like that. He needed to back up. But other than that, I was nice to everybody. According to you. <laughs> Extra nice. <laughs> Extra nice. Anyways. Nice. Shut up. Um, <laughs> thank you guys for listening and tuning in um, with us. You guys be sure to follow um life uh, life after feds um if you follow our instagram you can see them on our post and you'll see all their tags you can follow the ladies and find out more about their foundation and how um, um you can help them and participate and watch and join and yeah for sure um and then also stay on the lookout f- um for our insta story we will be shouting out our um, sponsors for this week thank you to them again um for sponsoring us um for this week and um for you so just so you guys know (laughs) 
because the game is dirty and so and so are you move that's (laughs) funny um just so you guys know moni will not be here next week she's leaving all tears oh my god yes i'm not gonna be here she um is going to new york yes um and she decided to leave me by myself Mm-hmm. Um, so you guys will hear me with a few guests next week. I would call in, but I'm literally going to be on the plane coming back at that same time. Mm-hmm, sure. I am. So, <laughs> oh, wait, no, wait. Oh, Lord. Oh, never mind. I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to calculate the hours. But you guys will yeah. hear me. I will be here on the air with, um, some guests next week. So be sure to tune in with me. Um, we will miss Moni, but. Of course you will. Until next Tuesday. Uh, no, Be I was going to say something. Spread love. Spread love, not STDs. Wow. <laughs> wow. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye.